Welcome to this episode of Matchback Systems Podcast, where we chat with industry leaders and influencers to get their insights on supply chain and transportation topics. I'm Heather Pearl. I'm delighted to welcome our distinguished guest today, Mr. John Urban. John is a veteran of the industry with tremendous experience in global transportation as well as supply chain technology. A warm welcome to you, John. Thank you, Heather. I'm, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you today. Great. So to start us off, can you share with our listeners just a little background on your career and um, perhaps where your interests lie now? Sure. Um, I began my career a long time ago at IBM in kind of a technology sales role, but transitioned pretty quickly into uh, you know, domestic intermodal businesses uh, and ran a company there for five or six years that was ultimately acquired by American President Lines and spent another 12 or 13 years uh, in the U.S. and in Asia in various roles at, at APL. Then in 1999, I co-founded uh, GT Nexus, which, which grew up to be the, the largest cloud-based uh, supply chain visibility platform in the world. And, had a pretty successful outcome at the end of 2015, and then since that time, I've uh, I've been chairman of, of Matchback Systems and on boards and advisory panels for for a number of early stage and um, technology companies that are focused on logistics and supply chain. Fabulous. So. Um, Let's talk about the um, logistics and trucking industry in general. Um, 2018 was, well, let's say a rather challenging year, and that seems set to continue throughout 2019. What are your views about where the industry is today and the issues it's facing? Gosh, well, the issues are, are many and, and, and varied, but, but I think if you take it up at 20,000 feet, I, I kind of see two things going on. One, from a supply and demand perspective, um, the, the trucking industry and the intermodal industry uh, are in some of their tightest capacity situations that we've seen in, in, a, in a long time. And that's putting stress um, on shippers and participants in that industry and, and changing cost structures and causing companies to, to look to, to figure out how they can rejigger their supply chains to be more cost effective and more product productive at the same time. And then in the background of all that, there is an inordinate amount of venture capital money um, and private equity money being invested in the, the international and the, and, and the, and the logistics business um, up and down the line in, in virtually every area you can. And, and, and that is both causing a lot of, of, of great expectations for things productivity-wise and capability-wise that uh, we'll be able to be taken advantage of in the future, but at the same time throwing a lot of dust up in the air and confusing people as to what's real, um, where are we really going and why, who should I align with, uh, which technology platform should I choose, it's really created a lot of, um, uh, a lot of concern and a lot of confusion. Um, not, a, uh, not the first time we've been in this situation and they the dust does begin to settle, um, but but I think it, it really adds to the dynamic of what's going on across the industry today. Okay, so um, there's a lot going on, particularly in the in the uh, how technology is impacting the transportation sector. So historically, transparency has not been we haven't been renowned for transparency and um, trust in the industry. Um, people keep calling for more transparency and collaboration between the different parties. So as technology enables greater data sharing and connected ecosystems, do you think we're well on the road to that happy place of greater collaboration through technology? I, I think that's a, that's a great question. It has there's a lot of tentacles to that uh, and, and implications. but. You know, traditionally, uh, the world of international logistics and supply chain and, and, and transportation to a large extent um, 
has been one where information was obscured and, and controlled and, and, and people would network to try to get greater insight as to what's going on. And for the last 10 years, various um, forms of technology have tried to build um, and improve visibility of information and uh, across the logistics and, and supply chain world um, and, and be, begun to, to try to build more highly coordinated collaboration between the many partners that, that plan all of that. Um, as, as that goes on, it's a, it's a fantastic goal, um, but it, it creates a lot of change and, and a lot of consternation and concern. And a, an example of that is as a, as a collaboration platform begins to uh, highlight and, and provide more instantaneous visibility uh, around how what's going on with a supply chain. Many times uh, a carrier or a logistics provider would can feel as though, my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm now, my customer sees so much of what I'm doing as opposed to just the outcome that I'm, I'm at risk of being boiled in my own data. Um, so that, that, that traditional um, knee-jerk reaction to, to, to hide data or to, um, uh, to keep things compartmentalized gets, gets exercised. Um, in reality, I think we're also seeing across the industry as carriers and logistics providers and, and beneficial uh, uh, contract owners, shippers, uh, begin to collaborate more. What they actually find um, is, is that there are clear opportunities to optimize uh, and to do things more efficiently to the cost benefit to all um, and to the efficiency benefit for all. So we're still in that transition. I think it will be going on for a long time. Um, I think as new and, and, and younger people come into the logistics industry who are more used to living in, in a highly visible world, trans, uh, uh, technology driven world, come on, the demands for technology change will, will become more rapid. So it's going to be an exciting uh, industry to be in for the for the next ten or twenty years. Okay. So talking about the um, younger generation, I know um, sustainability is important to them. So let's talk about that. I know it's important to you, especially with regard to carbon emissions. Um, transportation is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases in North America, so it became so last year, and the second largest in the world. Do you, do you think enough is being done to cut emissions in the transportation sector? So much, an incredible amount more that can be done. And, um, you know, I think when I look at it from a, from a traditional perspective, the industry has always chased how do I reduce costs? How do I become more efficient? Um, and, and, and those things are, are great and, and they're always there. But on the other hand, as people traditionally have looked at sustainability and environmental impact and carbon footprint, they viewed that in order to make progress in those areas, they had to increase cost. Um, and it was going to cost them more money and unless you almost had to get permission to go do it. Right. And what we're beginning to see, what I'm beginning to see across, uh, you know, with, with the introduction of technology and collaborative platforms and, and higher levels of visibility and the ability to connect disparate parties, um, that at the same time, you do all those things in order to optimize and, and to bring far lower costs and, and far better outcomes. At the same time, you're eliminating empty miles. You're, you're, you're eliminating a lot of sources of carbon. Um, and, and, and thus, you're actually driving forward very uh, far improved sustainability, far redu uh, big reduction in, in, in carbon footprint. So, so I get I get really excited about that dual purpose uh, that the technology plays in this in this industry, and, and where we can really take it. I, I just frankly wish that more major companies would step up more aggressively, frankly, than they are today um, right. on sustainability initiatives, but, but as part of their, their way to drive improvements in, in the performance of their, of their own companies. Right. I mean, I, I was reading the other day about companies like, you know, big players like Walmart, 
has um, made tremendous savings in terms of cost, like um, 19 billion through sustainability initiatives last year. Not, not, not just them, the big players like Walmart, Target, and there are a hundred others as well, um, and eliminated 633 million tons of carbon dioxide. So as momentum grows, um, it's um, you know it makes it proves that it makes good business sense to have sustainability initiatives. Uh, it's okay. absolutely true. And, and, you know, we're looking at ocean carriers moving to sulfur-free, uh, low-sulfur low uh -huh. fuel and, and, uh -huh. and, and making all sorts of investments there as well. Uh, I just think we're at the tip of the iceberg. So I look at those early reports. Um, I get uh, very um, encouraged by them. I think it's just, there's, a, there's a lot further we can go. Um, and, and we don't have to go down routes that try to take credit for things that really don't have an impact and, and try to cook the accounting books. The fact is uh, there really are ways to, to op optimize the logistics chain that we operate in um, to, to, to bring vast improvements in sustainability. Right. Um, now, technology, undoubtedly technology is dramatically transforming practices in the industry, very traditional industry. Is there a particular innovation that's really got um, you excited? Well, you know, I, I mean, I come from uh, a long history of GT Nexus where our goal was to dramatically improve visibility across the entire supply chain from, from purchase order or sales order issuance all the way to, through to last mile. And, and we lived in, in that world with with EDI connectivity and, and GUI interfaces and website screening and, and all the technology that at that time um, was the leading edge. Um, but the fact is the world continues to change, technology continues to improve. So when I look at what are going to be the things that really drive improvements in visibility and optimization and, and collaboration going forward, uh, I get really excited about machine learning and artificial intelligence and their applications to the supply chain and inverting the supply chain from a tell me what happened yesterday or tell me what happened last week to tell me what's going to happen next week and and so that I can actually do something about it ahead of time. Um, and that's the, that's the promise I think that, that artificial intelligence has. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of practicality and and, and how you apply that, and it's not just a simple panacea. Oh, I'll just I'll just turn on machine learning and everything will be great. But 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 that's really one of the biggest areas that I see logistics benefiting from. And then there's this whole area of IoT, the Internet of Things, and and the ability to to get live status events and updates on where physical um, things are, where my container is. Um, What's the status of it? What's the humidity inside of a box? Uh, is it empty or loaded? Um, and and IoT in combination with 5G, again, offers a whole new toolbox uh, of how to add uh, visibility and proactiveness across your supply chain. That, again, much like artificial intelligence, comes with some caveats. It's not the be-all and end-all answer, and just because you have an event out there doesn't mean that you necessarily really need to be seeing it. But but, uh, but I view those two IoT and, and and machine learning to be the the, the two biggest drivers in in um, advancement in logistics technology going forward. Right. Now you you were um, you were at TPM the JOC conference last week. What was the Top of mind for attendees. What were the key takeaways for you, especially in terms of technology? Well, you know, I really, uh, without giving a big over endorsement to TPM, I, I just find it to be one of the most effective conferences in the logistics industry because this collection of 2,000 people that come together and, and everybody is there to engage. So lots of business goes on and, and lots of good ideas are exchanged, and it's always exciting. I've been going to this event for since it started back in the early 2000s, and uh, I think one of the biggest changes that I've, I've seen over that time is the, 
the conference has always been very focused on everything maritime and policy issues and uh, all sorts of things. But going back to the early 2000s, technology had a footprint there, but it was pretty small. And, and over the years, you've seen technology participation in that conference, specifically as it applies to the ocean industry and the logistics industry, really grow. So the number of sponsors today of, of, by, by technology companies is, is appreciably higher. The number of panels dedicated to technology-related issues are significantly higher. And I think it really bodes well for what we traditionally think of as this old, sleepy, change-resistant industry of logistics, that it's really becoming ready to become modernized. Um, and, I, and, and I know that can be a little bit of a generalization, but I, but I think it really is a, is a great barometer for what to expect going forward from the logistics industry. Right. Now, now this is my um, final question. And talking of um, logistics and uh, transportation being a sexy subject these days, um, I'm looking for some words of wisdom based on all your experience. What advice do you have for anyone entering the industry? Well, the first piece of advice I have is to watch out that the because logistics is an industry that is international in scope and is exciting and it relates to every aspect of your life um, because of everything you buy and everything you see. Um, so a young person going into the logistics industry needs to be careful because it gets into your blood and you learn, you love it and you want to stay in it. So uh -huh. re recognize that going in. Um, but uh, the, the other thing I really want to point out is when you look at the changes that are going on in corporate America or corporations around the world, where supply chain and logistics are really being increasingly recognized um, as key differentiators for companies because they, they drive every strategy. It's not just Amazon. It's every company in the world saying, how do I, uh, logistics and supply chain is the way that I'm going to be able to deliver my product in a, both with customer satisfaction uh, and within a cost structure that I, that I can be competitive. Um, and I think the number of CEOs who, who really come from the traditional supply chain and supplier management business, uh, Tim Cook being the CEO of Apple is a great example, but it goes on and on and on from there. So I would recommend it's a great business, it's a great industry to get really smart on early and to build your career on. So I, 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 um, I couldn't recommend a better place for young people to start their careers. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, well, it's been great talking with you, John. I've enjoyed hearing your take on the industry, and I'm sure our listeners will too. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Heather, thanks so much for your time. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.